I'm reading from Matthew chapter 10, verse 27. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light, and what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of much more value than many sparrows. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Have a small prayer. Father God, thank you, Lord, for this word you've given us. Almighty God, I pray, God, that you speak to us through your word, Lord. Enable us, Lord. Fill us, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Strengthen us, God. What's the word you have for us, God? We give thee all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here the word of God is telling us, Lord Jesus is actually telling us, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? You pay a copper coin, you'll get two sparrows. And God is saying that not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. The question or the topic today is, Jesus is telling us we are of more value than many sparrows. What does it mean? It means God is telling us to understand what our value is. What is your worth? What is your worth, saints of living God? What is it that we consider to be our value? You know, if you attend an interview and then you pass the interview and then they say, okay, this is the amount of money we can pay you for the job you do. And sometimes based on your skill, you will say, no, no, I'm worth more than that. How much can you pay for me? What is your worth? What is it that we are looking at to be our worth? What is, how do we look at when we think about our worth? How much are we worth it? How much are we valuable? What is our value? See, many times we think it's the money we make. We consider or we weigh ourselves based on the money we make, based on our salaries. Oh, this is how much I work. Or it could be the cars you own or the houses you own. We try to define our worth by these things. And these things will make us feel good. When you feel like you've compared yourself with that. But is that what God is telling us? God, Jesus is asking us a question. What is your worth? He's telling us you are of more worth than many sparrows. Christ is telling us, hey, hey, children, I'm here to tell you what your worth is. How much money can people pay to make you feel like, okay, you're worth enough? It's not the social influence we have. That's not what our worth is. Then what is your true worth? If you are looking at these things, then we are very poor. If somebody tells you, I can pay you a million dollars every month, we, we sold ourselves to that million dollar a month. And we put our worth to be that much. That is a very poor estimation of our worth. What is your worth? Saints, what is your value? What do you think about yourself? Are you thinking I'm of no value? Are you thinking nobody cares about me? Are you thinking everybody has this good job? I don't have it. Are you thinking everybody has this good health? I don't have it. Are you thinking, oh my God, I'm the least, I'm the forsaken, I'm the last pick. Everybody is busy. Everybody gets everything. I don't get it. What is your worth? How are you evaluating yourself? What do you feel about yourself? What is your worth? Jesus is asking this question. Jesus is telling us, you are of more value than the sparrow. Hallelujah. 
we are of more value how much value is god putting on us if you look at the bible i mean if you think in a worldly sense you'll be limited by all these things that i just said you'll think okay this is what it is no wonder that's why we are always hungering and thirsting after people's approvals after money to make because we think that is where our worth is even in the spiritual realms you can see people making all these boasts and you want uh, this vision that was something great that people may recognize you and know you are worth something this is all as a result of it but what is the word of god telling us word of god tells us number one to begin with we are made in the image of god hallelujah doesn't matter what you think about yourself doesn't matter about what people think about yourself what matters is the reality what is the truth the truth is you and i we are made in the image of god to begin with it starts from there so don't you ever think you don't look good or you're not as blessed as this other no this is all outward but in the at the core of it you are beautiful you are made in the image of god we need to understand that we need to what we are going to do today is saints leave aside some lies i'm going to we are going to uh, talk some things about how the devil lies to us and some of the lies we believe in that's why we struggle that's why we are unhappy that's why we don't experience the presence of god and we are running and chasing after things that is our lie hallelujah praise be to god next god is telling us what can a man give in exchange for his soul what can a man give in exchange for his soul it's and a what causes the man if he gain the world to lose his soul amen it's in matthew chapter 16 verse 24 then jesus said to his disciples if anyone desires to come after me let him deny himself take up his cross and follow me for whoever desires to save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul or what will a man give in exchange for his soul wow praise be to god see saints if you are selling yourself to your jobs that you spend so many hours in your job that you think it is worthwhile to spend so much time in my job because they pay me so much that is something you are exchanging you are exchanging your time for your for the money they pay you in return the world does not have enough money to pay for your soul what is important here is the truth about our soul the value of our souls what we are worth and there is a lie from the enemy every day you wake up you see it it's a beautiful thing what happened to paul what happened to saul when he was going to kill people all the church he was going to arrest them he was persecuting them what happened beautiful thing happened beautiful thing what god made him blind for 3 days he could not see for 3 days because when you think you see you lose hallelujah praise be to god what is jesus telling us here verse 25 whoever desires to save his life will lose but whoever loses his life for my sake you will find it blessed be the name of god saints what is it you are losing for christ God is telling us you you desire to love life you desire to hold it you desire to hold on you keep holding money after money wealth after wealth this thing after this thing that thing you are actually losing it my child is telling 
I am not saying this. This is the word of God. You want to really find life. You want to really value your soul. Lose your life. So you may find it. Hallelujah. What God's word is saying is. Not perishable things. Christ came to show us. The real value of ourselves. Christ came to show us. The value of eternal things. He came to show us. What the true riches are and what a lie is. Fake things, fake things, counterfeit things. The world always, the devil always keeps showing us the counterfeit things, the fake things. How many of you want to run, spend all money? You work hard to buy rolled gold or fake gold. How many of you want to do that? You know. Uh, in India, when we were young, we used to go to exhibition, like a carnival, and they sell stuff there. And most of the time, they sell like cheap, cheap stuff there. Yeah, it, you buy a small toy, toy, it comes. It's a counterfeit thing. By the time you come home, probably it's broken already. That's the value of the stuff the devil sells. Today, you take the money, and tomorrow, you're always in need. Today, you do something to satisfy your flesh. Tomorrow, again, you want the same thing. Nothing ever satisfies us. Counterfeit. What is it that you're valuing after? What is the worth of your soul? What can you give in exchange to your soul? God is telling us the stakes are high. God is telling us, asking us, what can you give in exchange for your soul? Do you know how much you are worth? Is it worthy for you to spend so much time and money and resources on stuff that is actually meaning nothing? Let's see what God did for. So how much can the world pay you, saints? How much can the world pay you? How much can God pay you? What is your price? We are selling ourselves to our jobs, to this world. What is the price they are paying us? And look at the price God is paying us for us. First Peter 1.18 Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Here the word of God is telling us that there is a price God paid for us. And that is the blood of Jesus Christ. How much do you value your soul? God valued it so much. That Christ is God. He left his glory. He emptied himself. He became like a servant. Because he valued your soul and my soul. Saints, this is the word that Christ put on us. We don't understand our worth, but Christ understood, or Christ put it on us so we may understand. These are all counterfeits that the devil gives us. Even in religion, there are so many religions, seemingly good, some, cop, uh, some talk about be good and all this. These are all counterfeits. Fake. They have no life. It's like that uh, fake toys you get. After some, they have no truth in themselves. Even though they have a form of godliness or goodness. In the end, they don't satisfy. But Jesus is saying, I am the real God. I am the true creator. I am the one who is life itself. And my child, I value you. I gave my life to you. I purchased you with my blood. That's why God says, Luke chapter 21 verse 18. He says, not a hair of your head will fall. Luke, 20, uh, Luke chapter 21 verse 18. If I read from there it says it's somewhere on the Anyway, we know that verse. I, I have the wrong verse here. Uh, not a hair of your head will fall, Jesus said. In the last days, 
people are going to be after us they'll be troubling us they will take us to uh yeah actually i got it right but i was not looking into it uh luke chapter 21 verse 18 but not a hair of your head shall be lost by your patience possess your souls christ is telling us verse 17 you'll be hated by all for my name's sake jesus is telling us since today the holy spirit is speaking to all of us you're of more value than what you think we need to weigh ourselves with god's worth what the worth that christ has put onto us we need to believe in the bible what bible tells us we go to philippians if you look at uh, philippians chapter 3 and then verse um, verse 8 Look at what Paul is telling us. Philippians chapter 3 verse 8. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Indeed I... Philippians chapter 3 verse 8. Yeah. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Hallelujah. If you read King James, it says, count them as dung. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Paul is telling us, I suffered loss of all things for Christ. Saints, what did we lose? What did we suffer for Christ? What is the loss that we suffered for Christ? God is asking us, did we lose anything for Christ? Because Paul is telling those things which were which I thought were gain to me were rubbish, were dung. So when we look at things and say, okay, I want this, I want this, that's actually dung that we are running after. So these things we suffer as loss. What loss did you suffer for Christ's saints? See, people say the I'm reminded of that uh, uh, of the old widow who gives uh, two cents in the offering box and Christ Lord Jesus tells her, tells the people this lady has given everything did you give up everything for Jesus Christ I know people look at okay if I make more money then I will give to God when I make more money I know people buy lot a lot of tickets lotteries they want to make millions so they can do ministry fund ministry do God's work God is never interested in the amount of money you give. What God is looking at is, when you have the two cents that you have now, are you giving away those two cents? What you have, not what you will get. So you can get something, retain something and give the surplus. No, God is looking at, are you giving everything you have? Not like, okay, I'll make some more money, then I will give to ministry. No. God is looking at what you have. If you cannot give everything you have now, whatever it is, then your heart is not in the right place. That's why God is telling, I look into the hearts. This old widow has given more than anything. Paul said, I suffered. I count all things as loss. I suffered losses. That's why Jesus said, store up for yourselves treasure in heaven. How do we live? We live our lives valuing ourselves by what God has put the word as. And then the Bible tells us we are the temple of God. Holy Spirit, God's presence is living in us. Number one, we are made in the image of God. What is our worth? Number two, Christ paid the price for us we are redeemed by precious blood that is how much price god paid if god would have paid billions of money dollars or uh, or gold in the planet that would have still been very less he paid by his own blood by emptying himself god in his mercies he has done that for us hallelujah praise be to god and what is God telling us? I'll close with last verse. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.26. Uh, 
uh, 1 Corinthians 1, in the last verses, he's telling us, 26 to 29. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen, and the things which are not, to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom of God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. What is God telling us here? What is the word of God telling us? Word of God is telling us that we in ourselves, without Christ, we are the foolish people, we are the weak people, we are nothing. But when we were nothing, God put his worth on us. He put his very life on us. And he's telling us, you are dust, but I will raise you up. I will raise you up to be my temple, so my glory fills in you, and we be the particles of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Do you see that beautiful thing, Saint? How beautiful it is, our value is, that Christ paid the price, that we should evaluate ourselves based on the joy that is set before us. Hebrews 12, 2, Paul writes clearly, Christ, for the joy that was set before him, he ignored the suffering. You know, God had everything. God knows who he was. So when God left everything and came down as human being, when people ill-treated him, he was not upset because he knew who he was. That's why he was able to forgive. That's why he was able to live through and bear the cross because he knew who he was and when you know you are God you are so rich you are so full of abundance you don't care about small stuff it will be easy for you to forgive that's what that's how Christ did it so also we when we understand and know the worth and the value that God has put on us and he's going to give us we will not be afraid. We will not be so petty with people. We'll forgive their sins. We'll just look at them and say, Oh, I feel sorry for you. God's love is poured out into our hearts, says the word of God. So that's why God wants us to know what is your value? What is your worth? You are of more worth. Not a hair of your head will fall. Forget COVID. Not a hair. Today, how many hair of your head fell down when you had showered or when you woke up from sleep in your bed? Not one of them fell down without the permission of Father. 